Hello. Oh, hi there. How's it going? Happy Monday. Happy Monday. And welcome to the next edition of Monday Night Live, Live. baby. Live. We're here every Monday, 7 Central Standard Time. Good Lord willing, and the internet works. And the creeks don't rise. <laughs> and it don't get too windy to haul rocks. You ever heard that? No, yeah, I haven't heard that that's one. A thing. Where are you watching so. from? Are you new? Is this your first live? Let us know and hit that thumb button if you're on Facebook or YouTube. There's a thumb on both. Yeah. The thumbs up, not the. Oh, well, you know. I mean, be honest. Yeah, be honest. Leave an honest review. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We're really excited to be back with you. Hopefully, we can answer a bunch of good questions in the next hour. We got Georgia, Missouri, Tampa, Florida, Denver, Montana. We saw somebody from Summertown, Tennessee. Hey, yeah. Summertown. That's our neighbors. <clears throat> I love it. Where are you at in the world right now? What city? What state? What country? Paula says, thank you, Nisha, for the electrolyte video you did. You're yeah. welcome. Yeah. If you want to know everything there is to know about electrolyte. Well, that's not true. I just if, thought... if you want to know everything you need to know about electrolyte supplements, check out Nisha's latest video on Nisha Loves It. I just talk about the ones that I like. I don't get into the science. Drink your electrolytes. They're good for you. Yeah, yeah. Every human on the planet needs to mine their minerals and get their electrolytes. Hey, Paola. It's John very Kaufman's important. on here. Hey, John. Pe people who are eating the standard American diet actually need to really try to get more electrolytes because I guarantee you they're not getting enough. Anne's visiting her son in Tennessee. All right. Oh, I have Welcome. a really good have Welcome a good to visit. Tennessee. I love it. All right. Let's take some questions. Yes. Let's take some questions. Also tonight, I want tonight to be share your victory night. Okay. And this can be a scale victory if you've lost a lot of weight or it can be a non-scale victory. But in the comments sometime during this live, I want you to type your low carb success story, your keto, ketovore, carnivore success story in the comments. Uh, did you have a medical condition that you were able to reverse? It, were you on a bunch of medications? Now you're on much less or none. Have you lost a lot of weight? Do you feel better? Um, all those things. Put it in the comments because so many people are drawn. Thanks for sharing, Natalie. Are drawn to, to low-carb keto carnivore, but they're a little hesitant. Like, I don't know. All these people are getting such tremendous results, but I don't, my doctor said it'll kill me. And very often your story in the comments, when one person reads that story, they're like, that's it. I'm going to do this because if it worked for them that well, I mean, their story is my story. I'm going to do this. I'm starting tomorrow. And you could literally change some the trajectory of someone's life by telling your story in the comments. You ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Karen says, I'm a carnivore and believe I have kidney stones. How can I dissolve them? Well, uh, if you have kidney stones, you really need to know if you have kidney stones and also how large they are. That's a a huge part of the management of kidney stones. So you probably need to go see your doctor and get a scan to see if you do have them because sometimes low back pain is not a kidney stone. Sometimes pelvic pain is not a kidney stone. So you need to document, do you have them? And if so, how large are they? And then you can check out my YouTube videos about kidney stones for more information. But first thing I want you to do is see your doc and, and get diagnosed. Do you actually have kidney stones or not? Here's a success story from baby mate on keto since January. I've dropped 25 pounds and A1C is to 5.4 from six. Well nice. Done. You reversed Are your you pre-diabetes. Yeah, I'll, I'll pick some of these. Okay, you watch it. over there. <clears throat> Mr. Vegas has got a good point. Just stop telling your doctor that uh, you're going to go keto. Don't say the K word. The K word is very triggering to some healthcare providers and dietitians. Just tell them you're going to eliminate all sugar and processed foods and you're just going to eat a diet full of vegetables and meat because that's what that's what keto is. But just tell your doctor that. Don't say the K word. That's a great strategy. Christine has lost 13 pounds in one month. Nice. Michelle's A1C went from 7.1, which is terrible, down to 5.7, which is almost there. You're still barely pre-diabetic. You got one more tenth of a point to go and you have reversed your type 2 diabetes. That's so awesome. I love it. I love it. 
Missy Taylor's already saying hi to Granny Berry. I think mm-hmm. Granny Berry's watching tonight. If you guys, if you don't mind, she's only 91 years old watching us on the YouTube machine down in Alabama. Say hi to Granny Berry. Linda's lost 28 pounds in three months. Oh, that's Amazing. awesome. 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 Karen reverse my A1C. My blood pressure is now within normal range. My high cholesterol total still high, but everything else is lowered to drop four pant sizes as a side effect. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, I dropped mm-hmm. four pant sizes. So you want to talk about the high cholesterol? Yeah. So a lot of people are really hesitant to start keto because they're afraid their cholesterol w- will go up. Uh, about a third of people, their LDL cholesterol does go up on keto. About a third of the people, it doesn't change at all. And about a third of people, it goes down on keto. Uh, it doesn't really look like it's it's related to the diet. It's just what your LDL cholesterol needs to do. I don't really care, and you shouldn't care, if your total cholesterol goes up or not. Uh, any doctor who's up to date on his or her reading will know that total cholesterol is not a marker for heart disease. It's not a risk factor, whether it's high, low, or or medium. Total cholesterol is meaningless. So don't ever let a doctor concern you about your proper human diet if your total cholesterol went up because that's meaningless. What we want for you is for your triglycerides to go back down to normal and for your HDL to elevate up to normal so that you are as protected from heart attack and stroke as you possibly can be. Wow, Leanne, I lost 148 pounds in 18 months. I've been stalled now for eight months. I'm um, stuck to keto and all kinds of fasting. What else can I do? Please help. First of all, <laughs> listen. Mm. Standing ovation for Leanne. You lost an entire person. Yeah. So well done. That is amazing. And you need to celebrate that every yep. single day, every Absolutely. single day. You need to be so proud of what you have done. That's amazing. It, it, I'm not surprised at all that your body paused the weight loss after you lost 148 pounds. You're a woman and the female body doesn't really know how much you weigh. All, of, all the female body knows is that you're losing stored fat and that can freak a female body out. And sometimes a female body will put on the brakes, whereas most men just keep losing. I know it's not fair, but that's how it is. But just keep eating the proper human diet that you know is helping you reclaim your health, Leanne. And I guarantee you the stall is going to go away. Watch my YouTube video, The 13 Reasons Why Your Weight Loss Might Stall, and see if any of those things might be involved. And keep reaping all of the non-scale victories that you're reaping and I promise the scale will move again. It's amazing. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Literally, that's an entire person. A grown person. Yes. Yeah. All right. Righteous says, how to gain muscle and athletic performance on keto. Yeah. So if you want to gain muscle and athletic performance, then you're going to lift heavy weights and you're going to exercise really, really vigorously. That's what makes you a better athlete. That's what makes you stronger. That's what helps build muscle, not eating carbohydrates. Carbohydrates don't play any role. If your muscles need sugar, your liver's happy to make it for them on an instant's notice. So don't think you have to eat carbohydrates to have great athletic performance or to gain muscle. A really good source of information on that is Robert Sykes, who is Keto Savage on YouTube. He does a lot of videos. He is a bodybuilder, and he does high fat keto and he is jacked up so is his wife crystal so if you're a woman you go check out the lady savage yeah jacked up in a good way yeah yeah michelle i totally agree with michelle these people are so inspirational carol lost 100 pounds on keto now off all blood pressure medications hashimoto's in remission no acid reflux thanks thanks to you doc and i'm sure you watched other uh, docs too on your journey that wow. Carol that's so anytime you have such an amazing effect you know all your friends and family have seen you literally transform like the the caterpillar turning into the butterfly I mean that's literally what you've done they're ready to hear you now if, when, when they come to you and say how did you do that now it's time to teach them how Hey, Tat says, keto and fasting, do they help against Alzheimer's or dementia? Do you have any examples? Um, if First, before we even get into this, so this can be in the comments, if you have experience with a loved one or a family member doing keto, high fat, 
exogenous ketones, whatever helped them, put it in the comments so that you can help this person yep. uh, feel good about this decision that Dr. Barry's fixing to tell them. Yeah, to 100%. Alzheimer's dementia is now being considered type three diabetes or type two diabetes of the brain. So therefore eating a very low carbohydrate diet is going to either slow down the progression or in some cases probably partially or completely reverse the, the early symptoms of Alzheimer's dementia and other dementias. 100% Dr. Mary Newport has written a book about how high, high fat can slow down or reverse Alzheimer's dementia. Uh, Amy Berger has a, a book called The Alzheimer's Antidote, all about the science behind low carb diets, ketogenic diets and Alzheimer's. And I've got a couple of YouTube videos about Alzheimer's and dementia and keto. So 100% look into that and get your relative to go keto if you can. Hey, Missy, thanks for sharing. All right. Simply human ketosis helped my uncle with dementia stop his hallucinations and I can't read that. <laughs> right. I don't know about the last part. She got excited. <laughs> she got excited. It helped. Nathan, eat liver every day if you want liver every day, but I don't think it's necessary to eat liver every day. Dawn, lost 100 pounds and reduced A1C from 8 to 5.6. However, the eight, last 18 months carnivore, now my A1C is 5.8. Doctor is still heavy because it's below 6.5. How can I get it to go lower? Yep. Take a look at all your condiments, your sauces, your rubs, your sauces, all those things. There's probably something that has some carbohydrates in it that you weren't aware of. That, that very commonly happens uh any processed meat that you're eating read the entire ingredient list and make sure that sugar is not a bigger part of that processed meat than you thought it was uh, there's carbohydrates somewhere also next time your doctor checks your a1c have them also check a c peptide and a fasting insulin and that way you know that your pancreas is still making enough insulin okay you got super chat Okay. Rick go. says, is milk okay on carnivore and keto if I'm not lactose intolerant? Uh, just whole milk still has a lot of lactose, which breaks down into glucose and galactose. and go sugar. And both are sugar. And actually galactose, which is the milk specific sugar, is seven to nine times more glycating than glucose. And so it actually glycates or gums up or sticks up your cells even more than glucose does. So I don't ever drink milk of any kind. I use a little heavy cream occasionally in my coffee. I don't think that, that the fat in dairy is bad at all. I think it's a wonderful fat. I use butter and ghee all the time. Uh, but the, the lactose in milk is just too much sugar, especially in skim milk, 1%, 2%. Never drink that crap. That is the devil's ball sweat. OK, don't drink that. If you're going to drink milk, drink whole milk. And if you must drink milk, try to get raw milk if you can. I think it's probably less bad, but really stick to dairy products that are more fatty than heavy cream. So heavy cream and above, I think, are probably OK for most people. Not everybody, but most people. Margie, will you be at the Omaha, Nebraska Keto Summit? Haven't heard anyone talk about it. We're signed up and would love to see you. We'll both be there along with baby Beckett. Yep. And that's going to be what's the date? It's August 19th and the 20th. 19th and 20th of August of this year. If you live like anywhere around, <laughs> if you live anywhere around Omaha, Nebraska, come to the Keto Summit there. Uh, they have a website, but I don't have the address. If yeah. you just Google Keto Summit Omaha, I think you'll find it. Every time you say Omaha, I think about Peyton Manning. Omaha! And you if gotta, you're a Peyton you stomp Manning fan, you, you have to you stomp know. your foot when you say Omaha. 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 I don't know. That's that's a Peyton, that's a Tennessee thing, probably a lot of us. Diana lost 45 pounds and reduced her A1C from 6.1 to 4.9, and her cholesterol is high. And as long as your triglycerides are low and your HDL is high, it sounds like you're in good shape. Kaylee. Hi, I've been keto for two months, now down 25 pounds. I've been really lightheaded and dizzy lately. I'm not sure what's going on. What should I do? Two months down 25 pounds. Nice, nice. So number one, make sure you're getting plenty of electrolytes. If you're not getting enough salt, magnesium, potassium, and then even some of the minerals, you can have some lightheaded dizziness. Uh, that's, that's one thing. Number two, make sure you're eating until you're comfortably stuffed. Don't portion control or calorie count. You don't have to do that on this way of eating. 
Anything else you'd add? Salt, man. Yeah, salt. And if the dizziness and lightheadedness continues, not everything that happens to us is about the diet. If you keep having that symptom, go see your doctor and, and tell them about your symptoms because it could be some other thing going on in the background. DLC, keto one year down, 35 pounds. Asian male, 59 years old, 5'3", 133 pounds. Um, halted cholesterol, triglyceride, and blood pressure medications by choice three months ago. HDL 75. Ooh, nice. Triglycerides 59. Nice. Average BP 130 over 85. Nice. CAC 156. LDL 270. Uh, but LDLP is 20, 2009. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and APOB 180. Is this a problem? You you have you have such great numbers. The the last two numbers you talked about are still somewhat experimental. Uh, gurus and influencers love to talk about them, but we don't really have the black and white data to say these things absolutely definitively matter. We know low triglycerides matter, and we know that high HDL matters. And yours are stunning. Uh, we know that a good blood pressure matters. Yours is good. I think I think you're in pretty darn good shape metabolically. I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, Kame says, "Hey, Dr. Barry and Nisha, I want to check my metabolic health and make sure it's on track. What blood tests should I have, including th thyroid? Also, are vitamin D3 tablets okay? I'm fair and cannot be in the sun for very long." Gotcha. So, mm -hmm. for metabolic testing, uh, you need a hemoglobin A1C, you need a C peptide. You need a fasting insulin. You need a complete metabolic panel. You need a complete blood count with differential. You need a urinalysis and you need a lipid panel. And then for the thyroid, if, you, if you're having low thyroid symptoms, then you need a TSH, a free T4, a free T3, a TPO antibody, and a TG antibody. Now, you may also need to have your adrenal and your sex hormones checked, too, depending on your symptoms, but we won't go into that tonight. If any of you guys wanted to write those down and you missed them, you can go back and watch that part again and write those down uh, when we're done. We're at the, does it tell what minute minute we're at? We're at like at the 17-minute mark, so you can go back and rewatch that part. Maria says, what are your thoughts on whey protein and pea protein shakes? Yeah, pea protein mm. is crap. I would avoid that. I, I would never put pea protein, <laughs> purified pea protein in my mouth. No, I would not do that. I would not give it to baby Beckett. I would not let Nisha use that. Uh, Grab that bag. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, whey protein is not nearly as bad as pea protein. But I still, I wouldn't even, why do you want to use a protein shake at all? Most days of the week, you need to be getting your protein, Maria, from eating meat. Now, there's a new protein. Oh, it's not new. I just figured. I just we, it's new to us. We yeah. just discovered it because all the protein powders want to have pea protein, whey protein, and junk like that. But we found, Nisha found. Well, my friend, Nicole Burgess, who's also on YouTube. A lot of you probably follow her. You guys know, well, some of you know, I'm doing dairy-free for the month of August, and I had to have a creamer replacement, and she told me about this. It's Equip, the brand's Equip Prime Protein. Now, this is the vanilla. The chocolate one's actually the best one because the ingredients are amazing, but no gluten, no dairy, no whey, no soy, no hormones, no antibiotics, no fillers, no artificial sweeteners, no preservatives. It's made completely from grass-fed beef and collagen. Like, I mean, I can't find a thing wrong with it. Yep. So it's protein and collagen from beef. Beef. Yeah. So if you must, Maria, if you must drink a protein shake. Yeah. yeah. I, I, this is the only brand I've literally, we don't have an affiliate link. They don't know who we are. We are not getting paid to talk about this. Not yep. even one cent. Yep. And I tried the chocolate. It's freaking delicious. It's, yeah, they're both really good. It, it, it could be a problem. And I keep looking at the ingredients going, how can it taste that good? I mean, it, it does not taste like beef. It tastes like a delicious chocolate protein drink is what it tastes like. It's really, really good. Probably the best one I've had. It's hard to impress me. I've never yeah, liked yeah. protein drinks ever yeah. in my life, but this is <laughs> this is really good in my coffee. I don't drink it to replace protein, but it gives me extra protein, which is... Good job, Loki. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Loki show. All right. Look how big Loki's getting. I know. Yeah, Why he's getting, he's so he's getting he is big. the craziest cat. Nisha will be in the kitchen.
cooking some bacon or sausage or something, and he will come running full speed into the kitchen and jump up and grab onto her butt with his little tiny claw. Does it hurt when he does that? Yes, it hurts. It does. He climbs her like a tree. He, he jumps into my arms. He leaps like no cat I've ever yeah, had. He jumps life. really high. I don't know what's yeah, up. I'm doing a video on how I use this in my coffee. So if you're not over on my channel, Nisha loves it. Head on over there. That'll be featured on my channel this week. So check it out. Yeah. Troublemakers. <laughs> yeah, I saw that too. All right. Cindy Lou who says, can you eat too much protein and does too much protein turn into carbs? You... Uh, if you tried on a, a double dog dare or on a bet to eat too much protein, you probably could. But if you let your hunger and you let your taste buds guide you, you're never going to eat too much protein. It's not possible. Uh, it, you you can't if you're if you're eating low carb, then you're never going to eat enough protein to 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 stimulate gluconeogenesis against your liver's will. You're never going to turn that protein into sugar. The, that, that's not how the body works. So don't worry about that. Somebody, oh yes, Kelly Lee said, does the equipped creamer break a fast? Yes. Yeah, any protein, protein, any yeah. protein or collagen in and your in your coffee or in liquid is going to 100% break your fast. Yeah, but so don't, don't drink it. Flour bomb, we got like three Okay, times. go. A1C is from 7.5 down to 5.3, then 5.4. The doctor says diabetes can't be cured with food. If I eat mango, glucose will be 150 plus yeah. diabetic levels. Is this true? It, it is true. It, well, it's not true that you can't cure it, but it is true that if you go back to eating a high carb diet, your diabetes will come back. So let's talk about this. If, if our neighbor didn't like Loki, and started slipping some rat poison into Loki's food when we weren't looking and Loki got sick and couldn't play. We took him to the vet and we, and, and the vet said, well, somebody's poisoning your cat. And we figured out who, and we had the neighbor arrested so that he could no longer poison Loki. Would you say that Loki, his, his rat poisoning is in remission? Or would you say that we've cured his rat poisoning? Human beings are by design. By physiological design, we are low-carbohydrate mammals. We've been trained over the last 100 years to think that a high-carb diet is normal, but it's not. That is a false narrative that has been promoted by the, the big food manufacturers to sell you processed high-carbohydrate junk. We are, by design, low-carbohydrate mammals. We were never intended to eat 150 up to 450 grams of carbohydrates a day. That is not a normal human diet. That's why I talk about the proper human diet. It is by design a low carb diet. So yeah, if you go back to poisoning yourself with too many carbohydrates, then your carbohydrate toxicity syndrome will return. That's absolutely right. And so enjoy a, an occasional piece of your the mango that I can tell you love. But mango doesn't need to be a daily fruit for or a daily food for any human being. It's too high in carbohydrates. I hope that logic makes sense because that's very important to understand. If you start giving Loki the rat poison again, he'll get sick again. That doesn't mean that his rat poisoning was in remission. It just means you started poisoning the cat again. That's what happens when you go back to eating too many carbohydrates. Jamie, aren't we supposed to be omnivores? Being omnivores doesn't mean that we eat an excessive amount of processed carbohydrates. That's right. So we are supposed to be sugar burners and fat burners. We should be able to do both. But as uh, we progress, or I don't even know. It's, it's progress, but it's not. You know, it's like backwards it's false progress. progress. Yeah, yeah, so false progress. because right. we have all these processed packaged foods, we have become 100% sugar burners. And so we've lost the ability to fat burn yep. uh, effectively. We can still do it, but that's why we have the keto flu in that transition phase because our bodies aren't used to burning fat as fuel. And so yep. the whole point here is to be able to be fat burners again. Yep, you agree 100%. With that? Totally agree. So there's two questions here. One is, if you're, try if you're trying to keep from starving to death, then you should eat anything you can get your hands on, including the Lucky Charms and the Jelly Donuts. If you're starving to death, like literally your body fat percentage is 1% and you're about to die of starvation, you should eat any of the processed carbohydrate crap to keep from starving. But, Jamie, if what you're trying to do is optimize your health and optimize your human physique, 
then you need to eat like human beings have eaten for the last 3 million years, which is a super carnivore diet, which means that about 70% of our food came from animal sources and about 30% came from plant sources. And that's, I think that's why so many people have such great effects on a ketovore diet, which is meat heavy keto is because you, you kind of are mimicking that super carnivore where 70% of your food is meat. So yeah, we are omnivores, but that doesn't mean that we need, lots of fruits or lots of grains. It just means we can't eat them and not die of poisoning, acute poisoning. We want to be metabolically flexible. Yes. Uh, MS says, thank you from Japan. Dr. Ken, my life has improved immensely because of your advice. Ah, thank you. Thank you so much for that. <clears throat> Anybody else, if you've just joined us, please share your success story in the comments. We're getting so many success stories and I think it helps newcomers. Hey, Holly, to, to, to know this is not some weird culty diet like i don't know it might kill me no they, there are millions of people around the world getting all these benefits from a low carb keto carnivore diet so please share your success in the in the comment section so that other people can learn from your success all right kenneth says i've lost over 260 pounds <laughs> kenneth let me just say that one more time kenneth has lost over 260 pounds with ketovore. All my blood work looks fantastic. Way I went go. from 514 pounds to 248 pounds. Thanks for the inspiration. Excellent. Excellent. Dude, you deserve some sort Excellent. of medal, award. Yep. I mean, yep. oh my gosh, that's that's the, awesome. Wow. And you get you're getting the the reward and the award every day. Right. But I mean but like man, you should be on so a magazine. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, you need to be on a magazine cover, that's for sure. That's amazing. Hey, Kate says, should I be worried about heavy metals and desiccated organ supplements? I've been seeing some info on this recently. Yeah, I'll look into that, but I haven't seen any evidence that that desiccated organ supplements that come from grass fed uh, beef is, is of concern. But I'll check into that and I'll give you guys an update next week. Terry, have you had patients whose knee arthritis was helped by PRP mm. shots? Yeah, I actually used to, to give. Uh, protein or, or pla like plasma, platelet-rich plasma yeah. back in the clinic before the fire. Uh, we would spin it, the patients on blood down and then inject the platelet-rich plasma back into their knees. And I had several patients who uh, insurance didn't cover it, so they had to pay cash, but they reported significant improvement in their knee stiffness, their knee pain, and their mobility. Yeah, I think it's if it's done by a good doctor, I think it's a real thing. You had it done too. Yeah, I did. I forgot. I went yeah, to Nashville. Yeah, your shoulder. Yep, in, mm -hmm. in my shoulder and my knee. Twice? I think yep. we had it done twice. Yep. 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 I say we. It, it, it helped me tremendously. <laughs> yeah. Maggie, move. Great question. Can you eat ham hocks and pigtails on keto? Yes, ma'am. You sure can. Absolutely. Absolutely. Have you had a pigtail? No, I've had ham hocks. I haven't had a pigtail. I've had oxtail. That's awesome. I've had oxtail, pig's feet. Yep. I didn't uh, love pig's feet that No, much. I didn't either. It's too fatty for me. It was... A weird texture, but yep. it made amazing bone broth. Yes, the bone yes, broth was yes. fantastic. Absolutely, but the actual pig's feet. Actually, I, eating them? No, no, thank you. I didn't like. Them. But the bone broth was but fantastic. Was Super it cheap too. The neck is that what it was? No, it was pork neck, right? Yes, pork oh, neck. That's steak. really yeah. good. That's amazing. We yep. we try to eat as much nose yep. to tail. Yep. Nose to tail is uh, if you don't know, that means you eat everything. So we eat organ meat, and then we also utilize the unsavory pieces of the animal, which actually tend to have the most fat, most collagen, the most protein when you make bone broth. That's yep. the stuff you want yep. to put in your bone broth. It's good yep. stuff. But don't let us discourage you from buying pig's feet, but make make bone broth with them. Make a soup stock with them, full of nutrition. What oh, my God, it's so is, good. Uh, I made uh, the soup, and then I boiled eggs and sliced the boiled eggs and put eggs in there and that kind of like soaked up. It was amazing. I don't know why I didn't film that. Andrea, I've been on keto since March down 30 pounds. A1C is now 5.5. It was 6.8. I'm Beautiful. off my blood pressure meds. My doctor said my labs were perfect and to keep doing keto because it's working. Absolutely. Good job. Smart doctor. Kelly, my son, 23, lost 160 pounds in the past year doing keto. Nice. He now weighs 160. He's five foot nine. Struggles with fear of regain. He cuts okay. calories too slow. Uh, what should rock bottom be for him? Yeah, don't worry about that. He just needs to eat <clears throat> lots of fatty meat and a little bit of veg until he's comfortably stuffed. 
just like every other mammal on the earth. They don't measure and weigh and count. They just eat till they're full of proper species specific food. Then they walk away. That's all he has to do. You don't have to make this complicated. But seriously, I, okay. So for him, what he would optimally would be the best option is to find someone who's lost a lot of weight like him close to his age that he can talk to because this isn't rare to him. Most people who lose that much weight have that fear and to talk to someone else about it, that's going to help because mentally that's where that is. It's not in the food. It, it's, it's in his head and he needs, you know, he needs somebody to talk to about that. Yep. He actually has been through it and can yep. understand and be empathetic. So uh, maybe join some keto groups and see if you can find somebody. for hundred percent. Okay. Here's Miko Sedanes. Been eating one ounce of raw liver every other day to help clear up my rosacea because a carnivore YouTuber said that's what helped her. Is there any evidence this will help? I don't know of any evidence that eating uh, raw liver every other day will help with rosacea. I wouldn't be surprised, but the biggest thing I found that helps with rosacea is just a carnivore diet or a very, very low carbohydrate ketogenic diet. I actually have a YouTube video about reversing rosacea. I used to have rosacea and had to use a steroid cream two or three days a week to keep the redness down. Uh, it's like now I don't have it. And so uh, eat your liver. It's good for you in hundreds of ways, but I, I, it may or may not improve your rosacea quicker than just eating carnivore or keto. Okay, Kevin. That was pretty good. Get it? My younger <laughs> sibling is helping me eat the PhD. Should I call her my keto sis? Kevin is a comedian. You know what he reminds me of? The Jungle Cruise. He's a, he should write a dad joke book. No, he's a skipper. Like on the Jungle Cruise, he tells the cheesy mm, jokes. Yes, he, yes, He that's could true. do well on he there. Could, he could. Right, another Kevin, he's got a question. I eat only grass-fed beef outside of being a waste of money. Is there any reason for supplementing with K2 or MK7? Uh, could it be detrimental? Supplementing with K2, MK7, I don't think is going to be detrimental in any way. I like the, the vitamin K2 that's got the MK4 and the MK7 because the research hasn't really made it clear which one is better uh, and why. And so I, I, the one that I have experimented with before had both in it. I don't think it's detrimental at all. It may or may not be a waste of your money. If you're eating enough animal fats, you're getting a pretty good source of vitamin K2, but it doesn't hurt to supplement if you can afford it. Jewel says, thoughts on extra virgin olive oil uh, as two tablespoons shot every morning. So well, taking a shot of olive oil every morning. So, but that? why would you do that? Because someone said to, I'm sure. Yeah, there's no reason to ever drink vegetable oil or not only vegetable, any. I would never drink lard or beef tallow. Use it to cook with. Use it to season with. Put it on your hair. Put it on your hair. Put it on your skin. Beef towel is amazing on your skin. Every time I load up the air fryer with bacon for Beckett, after I've peeled off the pieces and put in there, I rub that stuff in. I don't wash it off because it's a great hand conditioner. It's better than anything you can buy at the store. Beef tallow, to be clear, good beef tallow doesn't smell. Yeah, but the, I smell like bacon the rest of the day when I do that, but good quality <clears throat> beef tallow has no smell. But I, I would not recommend drinking any vegetable oil or even avocado, coconut, or uh, olive oil. I just don't think there's any proven benefit to that. Lena, my A1C just came back 5.9. My goal is to get off medications. What does that usually look like? So you'll be able to get off all your medications when your A1C is down to 5.6 or lower. That's when you'll be able to completely stop all your type 2 diabetes medications. Uh, you And probably in three months when you have your labs rechecked, if you continue to eat very, very low carb, you'll be there. Princess Ninja says, I can't wait to meet you both on the low carb keto cruise in May of 22. So if you don't know, the low carb cruise has been going on for years. This year it's being revamped, rebranded, all new things. And we are, did you just pull a tick off of you? Yep. Uh, that's fine. I've been out in the woods all day. Well, you just going to hang on to it? No, I'm going to put him right here and deal with him but, in a barbaric <laughs> manner. I hate ticks. Anyways. <laughs> You can find all information at lowcarbcruiseinfo.com. It'll be sailing out May 2022. So still got a little time to plan, but get your tickets, get your rooms, come hang out with us. It's Absolutely. going to be a big time. We're going to have some amazing speakers. Check the website out for more information. Though. There's going to be hundreds of low-carb, woke 
real people I on this cruise. Word. Well, they know what I mean. I know. Yeah. It's been kind of bastardized. It has been. I agree. <laughs> but, but to hang out with these people and they, the buffets on the cruises are full of meat and full of vegetables. Of course, mm. they got the dessert buffet, but you don't have to go over there. And if you do, all the other keto people will judge you. So you've got this, this built-in peer pressure to stay away from the dessert buffet. So you go over here to the meat, you go to the veg, then you go eat until you're comfortably Peer stuck. pressure, amen. Okay, support system yes. to help you. I think that's a better way to look at uh, it. Yeah. No one's going to be judging you if you fall, but there will Somebody's be... Somebody's going to judge you. Okay. None of the good people will be. <laughs> and, and we won't be. All right, no, but we, we will judge. be there to support you, to be like, look, listen, it's okay. Just get yeah. right back on. Anybody has questions about arthritis, knee stiffness, shoulder pain, Zug Meister said Ketovore cured my severe debilitating arthritis that kept me in a wheelchair. Also lost 45 pounds. Love you guys. Thank you. Amazing. Well done, Zug. Alicia says, my family's going Ketovore. My daughter, who is 11, is starting sports. What should I do to make sure she gets all she needs pre-workout and post-workout? So what is she going to be playing? She's 11 she's and playing sports. Okay. So she needs to, for when she mm -hmm. sits down to each meal, at least half of her plate needs to be full of fatty animal food. That can be eggs. That can be meat. That can be sea, seafood. And then if she wants to add some veg, she can. If she just wants to eat all meat, that's fine too. She's going to get everything she needs to recover eating the proper human diet. So a lot of fatty meat, a little bit of veg, and occasionally a handful of berries for dessert. That's it. That's a proper human diet. Are you, did you pick that one? Oh, I, yeah. Mm. I, I wanted you to answer that. Paula says, what is ketovore? So Paula, basically in a nutshell, and I have an entire video. Well, I have several videos on my YouTube channel. Nisha loves it. Uh, but the long and short of it is it's eating under 10 total grams of carbs, meat based and very few vegetables and specific vegetables to what you are sensitive to. So for me, I have to stick to just like four or five vegetables and I have very few, most of my meals are only meat. And then every now and then I will have like onions or um, some other type of vegetable that I'm not sensitive to myself. But like I said, I have a whole bunch of videos over on my channel. So go check them out. And I have a couple too. Yes, but you don't do keto for I do some days. Thanks for the super chat, Melinda. Christy, are you pro a few strategic hormone building days a month for premenopausal women? What is a strategic hormone building day? That sounds like a fancy word for carb up. Is you, that what that is? I don't know. I've if, not if, heard if, of this. if by that, Christy, you mean carb up days, mm -hmm. then no, there's no there's no physiological reason for you to eat carbohydrates. But if you're talking about bioidentical hormone optimization, I think some people benefit greatly from that. Uh, yeah, um, let me get Max. Max said, can someone eat meat when they have cancer? Uh, if someone has cancer, they 100% need to eat fatty meat every day. Their body needs the protein and the healthy fats to help their body fight the cancer and, and help to keep their, their bones as strong as possible, keep their muscle mass and keep their weight on. Uh, meat does not cause cancer. Meat does not feed cancer. Both of those are myths that need to die. Thank you, Max. Jen, how can I... Uh how can I get my almost eight year old daughter to eat low carb? She will refuse to eat until the point that she's so hungry. She throws up. She's a very picky eater. She will refuse to eat. And so hungry she throws up. Yeah. So I'm assuming since she's eight years old, that she doesn't drive the car <clears throat> and she doesn't have a credit card. So you're the one who buys the groceries and brings them home. And I promise you that when she gets hungry enough, she will eat some foods on a proper human diet. Now, you can have raspberries, blueberries, blackberries, strawberries in the fridge. You can have whatever vegetables that are low carb that she enjoys eating. Uh, if she likes sausage, if she likes um, link sausage, Abby Grace used to call them dog duty sausage. Mm, that's gross. Yeah, but we ate them every day. Uh, but it, it doesn't have to be grass fed, grass finished steak. It can be any meat. Surely there's some meats that she likes. I have a different piece of advice for you because I'm, your child doesn't sound like that's ever going to work on her. So here's what my advice is to you. Go buy Maria Emmerich's new Keto for Kids. It's actually called Sugar Free Kids. Lots of fun, interactive, pretty 
kid friendly like things that she's gonna want to eat don't tell her they're low carb she doesn't have to know that they don't look low carb just don't tell her that's right and just start feeding her that stuff it's gonna be delicious and just don't tell her she's eight she's not gonna know is she gonna be in the kitchen long enough to figure it out no i'm <laughs> not at eight years old probably not so right. Invest in that cookbook. I think it's an e cookbook, and you can print it off. I'm pretty sure. I don't have a link to it, but it, I just Google Maria Emmerich sugar free kids. It should pop up. You got a new admirer, Crow Man, is <laughs> digging you. I'm glad somebody likes me. Tracy, I actually have a YouTube video about psoriasis on this channel. Psoriasis is one of the autoimmune skin conditions that responds amazingly well to a keto or a carnivore diet. Uh, people who were so covered with psoriasis plaques that they, they were scared to even leave the house, wind up with a little a little herald plaque somewhere on their leg or elbow and all the rest of it goes away. Some people have complete remission of their psoriasis, eating low carb enough for long enough with real whole foods. If you have psoriasis, you need to try a 90 day trial of keto or carnivore. Kelly says, why change to desiccated thyroid and how do I convince my doctor? Is it running? Is it? That noise? No, I think the air, air conditioning. Oh, okay. Yeah. How does she convince her doctor? So you convince your doctor why you want to change. So levothyroxine or synthroid is fake T4. That's why it's called synthroid. It's synthetic. What you want is real T4 along with T3, T2, and T1. Desiccated thyroid has real T4 in it and also has T3 in it. So before the Synthroid company invented Synthroid and put it on the market, every doctor used a desiccated thyroid. That's what everybody used. But the Synthroid company did such an amazing job advertising Synthroid and also of demoralizing the company that made Armour Thyroid that doc many doctors are afraid to use Armour or Nature or uh, WP or NP which are all desiccated thyroids because they're afraid that they're not a consistent dose. And that's complete horse bucky. They're absolutely consistent. They're amazing medications. And the vast majority of people that we talk to have much better results on a desiccated thyroid than on a fake T4 like levothyroxine. A good trick is to call your pharmacist in your area and ask them who's a doctor in the area who prescribes desiccated thyroid and they'll tell you who the doctor is. And then if your doctor won't change their mind, you can go see that doctor. You're welcome. Hey guys, make sure you hit that thumb button on YouTube and on Facebook and feel free to share this <clears throat> anywhere and everywhere. Even if you're, you know, have two friends on Facebook, which is about how many I have these days. <laughs> Flower bomb says, is it possible that a man who has an A1C of 6.5 and a fasting glucose of 130 is actually insulin sensitive. Probably not. Oh, you found it. Yeah, I found it. Probably <laughs> not. Uh, flower bomb, ask your doctor to check a C peptide and a fasting insulin. And what you're going to find is that your C peptide is high, which means you're hyperinsulinemic. And anytime you're hyperinsulinemic, you are by definition insulin resistant. So yeah, it's it's especially, I mean, you're you're a type two diabetic right now. So there's no way you're insulin sensitive. That's impossible. So keep cutting the, the carbohydrates that you eat daily. Keep cutting them down. Try to get down to 20 total carbohydrates a day, flour bomb, 90. And within three to six months, your A1C will be back down to about 5.6. Jen says she's super picky with meat. I barely got her to eat egg whites. She won't eat the yolk. She's good with hot dogs. I need to try Nisha's nuggets. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. those nuggets are, and get her to help you make them too. <clears throat> and if you get a good quality hot dog, there's nothing wrong with hot dogs. Yeah. Peterson's makes quality oh, hot yeah. dogs, by the way, in case you're looking for some. They are pricey. <laughs> Fingers. Uh, <laughs> Loki might break something. That that could happen on I've this been, what, He almost knocked over my glass while ago. He's feisty. All right. Rock and Rolla says, why don't you think eating meat and fat isn't going to build up in the arteries? because that's not how human physiology works. I know that there used to be that, that commercial that showed, oh, you know, at room temperature, grease is a solid. It'll clog up your pipes. But the human body is not room temperature. We're 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. There's never any solid grease in your pipes. Uh, actually, the stuff that will clog up your pipes is too many carbohydrates and too much fructose. That's, that's the things that'll clog your pipes. 
Sean says, how do I, or how should I work out after starting keto and carnivore and reducing my meals to OMAD? However you want to. If you want to swim, you can swim, you can bike, you can lift weights, you can work out like I do and get your chainsaw and go to the woods and don't come back till the battery's dead. There's a, a million different ways to work out. You need to find what you enjoy, what, what's fun for you, because I look at it as going outside and playing. And that way I'm never like, oh man, I got to go outside and play today. Said no kid ever, right? But if you're just, if you're working out no, and you don't really enjoy it, yeah, it's true. But if, if you're doing a workout that you don't enjoy, you're not going to do that for, for long enough to have a meaningful effect. Brian says, I'm still having leg cramps. I do keto chows daily, magnesium, cod liver, and Redmond's on everything. Please help. Still having leg cramps. Yes. Yeah, the, the Redmond's is great. Cod liver oil is great, but you... you he does keto chow daily minerals and magnesium. Gotcha. So you may have to get uh, keto chows just through electrolyte drops because they, they have much more of the magnesium and potassium. They also have just magnesium. Yeah, and you can get just magnesium. But let me tell you this. Sometimes there's a medical reason why your legs are cramping, especially if it's just one leg. If that's happening, you need to go see your doctor ASAP you may have an arterial blockage from your years of bad behavior before you started this way of eating. But there can sometimes be medical conditions that will make you cramp in both legs that you still need to see your doctor for. So if you know you're getting enough magnesium and potassium and salt and you're still having leg cramps, it's time to go see your doctor. Robert says, what happens to protein you eat beyond your needs? Does it turn into sugar or is it past? It's it's past. It's used to build muscle. It's used to build bone. It's used for many, many different things in the body. Your body can burn protein for fuel, but it's very inefficient and it usually won't do that. Uh, and I, again, we're talking about if you let your appetite be your guide, if you let your taste buds be your guide, you're never going to eat too much protein. Now, if you're at a hot dog eating competition and you eat 492 hot dogs and break the world's record, you ate too much protein. 100%. Is that, is that as damaging and as bad as eating too many carbohydrates? No, it's not. But it's still not ideal. So only, only enter one hot dog eating contest a year. But on a daily basis, let your appetite and your taste buds and your hunger be your guide as to how much fatty meat you should eat. Jason, will Gatorade Zero over ice break my fast even if I don't eat for a total of 16 hours? Is this maybe okay? Also, Ketobor total carbs per day. So total carbs on Ketobor, keep them 10 and under total. Count all the carbs, every yep, carb, yep, yep. every carb. No exceptions, yep. every carb. Gatorade Zero technically is going to break a fast because it has a sweetener in it. Yeah. yeah, anything with a sweetener is probably going to at least partially break the physiological fast that we're talking about. But... A lot of people do what's called dirty fasting now, which is like a modified yep. fasting where you allow for uh, keto sweeteners, yep. but you still don't eat meals. So it's technically it's zero calorie, but you still have the sweeteners, which could affect your fasting, but probably not exactly. enough to really, really make a huge yep. difference. And let's be real here. You know, using Gatorade Zero is way the hell less bad than if you were just drinking Coke. OK, it, it, it is better than drinking Coke, 100 percent. It's better than drinking regular Gatorade, Gatorade, but that still doesn't make it ideal. Oh, here comes Baby Beckett. Hey, you're here. Hi. <laughs> oh, Hello. Baby Beckett. Come over here and say hi. Oh, I see it. Oh, You want to sit the other way? Uh-huh. Can you wave at that baby? Wave at that baby. <laughs> Good job. Who is that? Who's that? Who's that? Mama. Who's that? Mama. Mama? Who else? Who's that? Who's that? Who is that? What's your name? <laughs> it's, it's, um, Dada. it's Dada. He's shy. Who are you? He's very shy. Beckett. There you go. Beckett. Okay, you ready to get down? Thank you. Love you. Jamie says, what about gout? Yes, what about gout? Gout is caused by eating too many carbohydrates, having chronically high insulin, and eating or drinking too much fructose. I have a really good YouTube video on this channel about gout that explains what causes gout and also it just destroys the myth that eating meat or seafood causes gout. That's not how it works. 
I'm gonna cut his hair eventually. I'm not ready. Okay, give me time. It's a process. Bacon Beckett. That's right. <laughs> Queen She says, I have fibroids and I'm trying to manage them. I don't want to have surgery. Will keto or carnivore help shrink them or get rid of them? She has fibroids. Oh, yeah, 100%. So fibroids, endometriosis, and PCOS, all three of these things respond beautifully to a ketogenic diet. When you're eating less than 20 total carbohydrates a day, fibroids, we've seen this in multiple people, they will slowly shrink. Now, they may not go completely away, but they'll get small enough that you're not having any pain, any symptoms, any bleeding, okay? Yes, if you have fibroids, if you have PCOS, if you have endometriosis, a ketogenic diet, a carnivore diet, a proper human diet is the way for you. Wow, I'm Unikitty. She's asked this question a few times, so I'm going to answer it. Nisha, why don't you make egg white bread? Also, I love the native deodorant you suggested. Great. Love, you. love that you love that. I don't make egg white bread because I am lazy, <laughs> lazy. And I don't think it's, it's not a necessary tool that I need to have in my toolbox. Yep. And so I, it's not worth the energy. And also it is humid as all get out here. And I don't think it would do as well because of the humidity it's egg whites. And so I think it would fall anyways, but I think that it's a great tool to use. If I ever did make it though, it would be slathered in butter. Do you, so, <laughs> do you miss bread at this point? Yeah. You still do? For certain things. Uh, see, I don't miss bread at all. I literally, if I never ate another piece of bread the rest of my life, I'd be like. There are certain situations that trigger me to just want a bologna sandwich or something like that. But then, at, you know, at the end of the day, really, it's not that big of a deal for yep. me. Uh, John Kaufman used to suffer from gout. He's had no gout flare-ups in four years. He stopped eating carbs and he stopped drinking booze. That's that is the cure for gout. You got it, John Coffin. Matt says, Don't we need carbs to build muscle? I'm in the gym every single day. No, you don't. That's a myth. Robert uh, Sykes, look yep. him up. Robert Sykes, um, look up Danny Vega, look up uh, Jason Whitrock. All these guys uh, eat either low carb or keto or carnivore at some points in their career are jacked up with muscle. Look at Dr. Sean Baker, uh, who's 54 years old sure. and is is strong as an ox he he you don't need carbs to build muscle it's a myth melissa going to the uh, pcp for the first time since beginning ketovore advice on how to eat between now and then and how long to fast prior to the lab work you need to fast for about 12 hours before you get your lab drawn don't fast for longer than that or it can actually affect some of your lab results Karen, my husband ha had small particle LDL level raised and plaque in his carotid elevated while on keto. He had three yearly CIMTs. Would carnivore be a better option for him? Yeah, carnivore is probably going to be his best option. Yep, absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> Brian said he's been taking the mag and the daily minerals. Calves twitching without pain most of the time, but painful waking cramps once a week. And that's the same person. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's time to go see your doctor. The, not all things that happen to human beings are caused by the diet. Uh, you need to get checked out and make sure you don't have an arterial blockage. Christian, I've been carnivore for two weeks. When can I expect to see lower blood pressure? <laughs> it might take longer than two weeks, yeah. Christian. It bit. might, uh, depending on your age. He doesn't say. Uh, I mean, you've you've been eating crap for decades. It's probably going to take a few months or maybe even a year or two for your body to heal enough that you can have an absolutely normal blood pressure again. This is what I tell people who start keto and, and want to see results fast. And we get it. You want to go fast. You're all Ricky Bobby. We know. Us too. But if you broke your arm, would you expect it to heal in two weeks? Right. No. Oh, I keto, keto. Is my arm healed? No. So it's going to take six weeks. Why would you expect your entire metabolic system your heart, all of your health markers to come down really fast. It's going to take, it's a process, but it, you're moving in the right direction. So just give it, give it time, give your body time, have some patience, give yourself grace. Yeah. Jen, keto is the best diet for anyone with Alzheimer's. Uh, I've got a YouTube video about that. And we talked about this earlier in this video. You can go back and watch that. We gave more details. <clears throat> Frank, is the diabetes disease itself the cause of higher risk? to complications or is it the uncontrolled blood sugar? That's a great question. question. It's a great question. Frank's thinking 
that's good. So I don't think anybody's entirely certain. Is it the high blood sugar or is it the high insulin? For, because for type 2 diabetics who are eating too many carbs, their insulin is chronically high. And for type 1 diabetics who are injecting insulin and also eating too many carbs, they're having to inject too much insulin. So both type 1s and type 2s wind up being hyperinsulinemic. There are some people, some doctors uh, who are colleagues of mine who think it's the high insulin that's doing the majority of the damage. Some of us think it's the high blood sugar that's doing the majority of the damage. Some of us think it's a combination of both. In reality, it doesn't really matter because if you're eating a very low carbohydrate diet, you're fixing both of those, right? See how that's elegant, isn't it? You just don't have to even worry about what it, what, what it is. Just fix it. All right. Lisa says, will donating blood after an A1C, will be donating blood after an A1C, planning to donate tomorrow and have lab work done next week after doing keto for four months? Will, yeah, will yeah, it, affect yeah. it might A1C? affect it a few tenths of a point. I'd probably wait at least a month after you give blood before you have your A1C checked because it, it absolutely goes on the glycated percentage of your red blood cells. And you're going to, when you donate that blood, you're going to produce a bunch of brand new blood cells, your bone marrow is, and that could actually affect your A1C. So wait, wait at least a month. Carly, do you have an opinion on fasting zones? I don't, I don't know, know what it, that is yeah, We don't know what fasting zones are, Carly. I don't, I'm not sure. Be Mel more. Melinda, diverticulosis disease and LPR, is keto okay? Oh, 100%. You absolutely need keto or carnivore. Lindsay Ann, what are signs someone needs to give up dairy? Well, <laughs> let me just tell you. It's a long list. A long list. It's yes. a long list. I might do a, a video on that. I'm going dairy free. My sign was that I kept getting cystic acne after I stopped breastfeeding. And the only thing I can think of was that it was the dairy. And I was only really drinking heavy cream. So it can be pain. It can be increased secretion. You get snottier. You get more phlegm. Some people have pain. Some people have acne. Uh, some people get rashes. Yep. What else? Joint pain, uh, arthritis. So many people who got rid of all the dairy, their arthritis got better. Psoriasis, eczema, definitely. Rosacea, yes. dandruff is a huge one. That when people get rid of all the low-fat dairy, they keep butter and ghee and maybe a little heavy cream, but they get rid of all the other dairy, their dandruff tends to get better. I've got a YouTube video about that with the research in the show notes. Also, we're not anti-dairy. We love cheese. We love heavy cream, but there are just some instances where you should probably cut it out or decrease it. One of them being autoimmune diseases like I have. So if you want to watch me struggle on the dairy-free, you know, bus, come yeah. watch me over on my channel. Here's a super chat from Jen. My doctor says my BP is beautiful. It's been in the 120 to 130 over 80s range. So I'm wondering why I'm on a blood pressure med. That's I, I, that's an excellent thing to wonder about. I thought 120 over 80 is normal. So the American College of Cardiology says that 120 over 80 is the new normal. OK, but many uh, medical um, organizations don't go by that. They still the American Academy of Family Physicians does not go by the 120 over 80. They say that is falsely low. That's going to encourage too many people to have to be on blood pressure medicine to get their blood pressure that low. They have a higher setting. In my opinion, if your blood pressure is under 140 uh, on the top and under 85 on the bottom, you're done. You don't need any meds. And so uh, call your doctor and say, hey, my blood pressure is so good. I'm going to try a two-week trial of not taking my blood pressure medicine and see what my blood pressure does. And of course, if it goes back up, you'll get back on your blood pressure medicine. But if it stays in the 120s over 80s, you're done, Jen. You've, you've Reversed your hypertension. Congratulations. Amanda, is carnivore safe for individuals with hemochromatosis? 100%. Yeah. Any any spectrum of the proper human diet from low carb to keto to ketovore to carnivore is safe for all human beings, regardless of medical condition. Susie Q, I have Hashimoto's and my mental health is taking a toll on me. My antibodies are over 2,000. I really need help. I'm 40 years old, a wife and a mother of two kids. Any recommendations? Susie, girl, I've been there, all right? What you need to do is trans, you need to transition slowly because you have an autoimmune disorder who that's obviously out of control. So you don't want to stress your body out even more by switching cold turkey. So go from cutting down, track your carbs for a week, cut them in half, cut them in half, cut them over six to eight weeks, 
then go from keto under 20 total carbs, go from that to ketovore, so under 10 total grams of carbs, then you need to go carnivore for at least six weeks, maybe eight weeks, and then start reintroducing uh, certain foods, okay? I'm, I'm writing a program because I there's nobody out there talking about Hashimoto's and keto and carnivore. Everybody wants to push paleo and autoimmune, you know, protocol. protocol. Yeah. That didn't work for me, and I don't think it works for a lot of people. So I'm trying to write a program. It's not ready yet, but that's that's the gist of it. You just need to get all the way down to carnivore. Do it slowly, though, because <clears> you, if you stress out your body, then you're going to crash. I totally agree with all that. <clears throat> CP says, would keto or low-carb help with TMJ? Hmm. I would say yes, because keto is going to lower your levels of chronic inappropriate inflammation everywhere, including in your temporomandibular joint. But I'm going to look into this, CP. I may actually do a YouTube video about this. That's a that's a good thought. Uh, we've had several people reach out to us and tell us their TMJ is so much better on keto. Anybody watching, have you, have you had improvement in your TMJ symptoms on keto or carnivore? Me? Yeah, I, I knew you had, but yeah. I didn't want to use you. People will think you're biased. Oh, well, yeah, but okay. I'll look into that further, <laughs> CP, and see if I can't find some research to support why keto would, would help TMJ symptoms. Great question. Oh, wait a minute. Where'd that go? That was a good idea. Dang it. I hate when it jumps like that. I know. So annoying. Go ahead. Uh, Kelly wants to know, does uh, insurance usually cover desiccated thyroid? Most insurances will cover at least one of them. Uh, when I was practicing full time, most of them would cover NP, thyroid, or armor, one or the other. And so they're they're both essentially the same for most people. And so you should um, you should find that they cover at least one. And also keep in mind that if you just pay cash for the desiccated thyroid, some of them are like twenty five bucks a month. If and, you have a what are they called? The savings account? Yeah, health savings, health account, savings account, right. account. You can do that. <clears throat> yeah, but if your copay is 35 bucks, but it actually costs 25 bucks to just buy the medicine, buy the medicine. Becky said we need to have Granny Berry on the show. We do. Okay, awesome. just a few more questions. We've already went over on time. Jen says she lowered my lisinopril to five milligrams two days ago, and it went down to 106 over 72, which was my lowest stay in between yeah. 106 and 117 over 80s. Yep, you're almost done, Jen. Uh, <laughs> keep your keep checking your blood pressure at home and stay in contact with your doctor. You'll be off all medicines in at least in, at, ma at most another month. All right, Tanya says I supplement magnesium. Bisglycinate. And use Relot, but when too much walking or if I'm on a bike ride, I get bad foot cramps. Is that mag or potassium? It's probably neither one. Any of us, especially over the age of 40, I'm, I'm used to working out in the woods all day, but if I were to go for a three-mile jog, I don't do that ever, right? If I did that <clears throat> tonight in bed, I'd probably have a cramp because I overwork my muscles in a way that they're, they're not used to it. So anytime you exert yourself in a new or different way, especially if you're over 30 or 40, then you're likely to have a muscle cramp that night. That doesn't necessarily mean you're deficient in magnesium, potassium, salt, or anything else. It just means that you overwork those muscles and they cramped up during the night. Uh, Branzel, is it okay for me to do keto after gastric sleeve surgery? Why or why not? I'm in the phase of where <clears throat> I can't eat. Or I can eat normal food. Yeah, 100 percent You will keep any of the weight gain from ever coming back if you'll go ahead and transition now to keto. Later on, you can you can experiment with carnivore if you want to or ketovore, but keto is the way for you. Okay, guys. That is it for this Monday Night Live. Absolutely. We answered a ton of great questions tonight. Shared a lot of success stories. We, yeah, so many success stories. If you know somebody out there who needs to read some success stories in these comments, share this video with them. You could literally change their life. Thanks so much. We will be back here next week. Same place, same time. Thanks, See you then. thanks to our patrons and Facebook supporters. We love you guys. See you.